Hey there, traders. This is Sam with your E-mini Futures Trading and Market Recap for Thursday, October 17, 2024. Time is currently 7.57 a.m. Eastern. What we do here primarily is find high probability trade setups in the ES by using data in the SPY, also known as the spiders. The ES, of course, is the S&P 500 E-mini Futures. Check out the description below this video to learn more. I don't have many levels on the board today. Notice that the overnight session has pushed price up to around 584.60. That's of right now. We still have plenty of time until the opening bell, and there is an 8.30 a.m. data release that might move price around in the meantime. You can see current price right here. They are already up to the area around this level of 584.82. And by the way, all the other ETFs and indices that I track are currently up in the pre-market too, except for the IWM. Remember how we pointed out in last night's video that the IWM got above an important area? They closed above an important area yesterday. Well, currently in the pre-market this morning, they've come down from that. Not saying that means a whole lot right now, but it's just interesting that the IWM is down in the pre-market while everything else is up. It's just something I'm going to keep in the back of my mind. While the big picture is still bullish in the SPY, and the pullback they had the other day appears to be just that, a pullback, Still, the chance of a bigger move one way or the other seems to be growing. Not saying anything with certainty. I just want to be aware. There's a lot of white space on the chart this morning for a couple reasons. The levels you see here are the only ones I felt were important enough to include. Whatever happens, we'll come back to this chart after the closing bell to discuss the aftermath. Any trades entered in the E-minis based on these levels in the SPY will be dissected. And the plan is to either make money and learn in the process, or if we give money back to the market, we will still learn something in the process. Catch you on the other side. And we're back. It's almost 6.30. Pretty straightforward day. One good trade, one official trade. Yes, the spiders pretty much ping-ponged between these levels that we had on the board before the market opened. However, playing by the rules, you would have had one trade. I want to point out this before I get into this, that they opened here. So this is, they gapped up all-time highs, uncharted territory. They came up within, I think, a nickel of this level we had on the board from the morning. And after all day long, they come down, what is it, 40 S&P handles, 40 S&P points or so to within like four pennies or so from this lower level. So pretty interesting that they respected these levels all day long. So where was the trade? So this is a good example right off the bat why I don't like to take trades usually within 15 minutes of the opening bell. If you had taken a long trade when the SPY hit 584.82, you would have been out of luck. But giving them time to settle in a little bit, 945, they're definitely under this. So the market's telling you that, okay, they're settling in. They, they already kind of showed you a big drop. They're kind of weak. Probably they're going to go lower. So going short at the level, if they come back up to it, that's the plan. 584.82, adjust this to 584.77, five cent buffer. There's a short trade. Boom. Pretty nice base hit or more. I'm not going to touch this level for a future short trade. So while they did respect it later, just not going to do it. That's the way I like to play them. But you're welcome to try it if you want. So 582.25 would be 582.30. And they came up within seven pennies and took off. That's a near miss. Not sure when to take it again, but when they did finally hit the level, it was after the line in the sand. I don't trade within 30 minutes of the closing bell. This is essentially near the close of the prior day. So they came down, rocketed off of this area. So the market's telling you right here is probably where the level should have been. Sure enough, in the future, if you look all the way over here, that's where they found support again. Like, like this other level, it was good for multiple trades if you wanted to try it again. But to me, this is the one official base hit. Very easy trade. And here is how I traded it. I have this paused right as I'm putting into order. So I have in my order activation, I'm saying if the SPY is greater than or equal to 584.77, then, and I click OK, what you don't see off screen is me saying sell at the market in the E-minis when that scenario or if that scenario happens. That's why you see the order get filled pretty quickly, automatically, without any limit order on the chart itself. Sold four there, took three off, and tried to trail the remaining contract for more points. Could have just had the full four points base hit. It would have been just fine. Actually, I got five points. You see the five points over here, and that happened quickly. The remaining one contract was trailed for a couple more points. If the trailer had been maybe seven, seven and a half points, 
I would have been able to ride this thing farther down because you know they dropped all the way down close to 582.25. And I want to point out something. I'll pause this to talk through this. This level here, so where do they come from? Well, oftentimes the opening range, which is the first 30 minutes of the day, when they, they give you some type of, of move and they come back and re revisit the low of the opening range, which is right here. This happened you know, just a few minutes after the market opened. They're kind of moving around. They're coming back down. Well, oftentimes they will spike the low of that opening range, which is right here, and pull up. So I'm just, I just put a level here just to say to myself as a reference level, if I had taken the trade, I think I hovered above it for a while, or maybe we already passed that. In fact, let's just back up so I can, so I can show you that. Hovered above it just to see where a base hit would have been, and uh, that would have worked pretty quickly. I just didn't take the trade. It was just sort of something I was just playing around with. Wasn't a level from the morning, but here we go. So I'm hovering, or put a line there, 583.52. That, that's 40 cents in the SPY, and they hit it pretty quickly right here. But even later, they went up a lot higher. But you know the rest of the story. Maybe I'll just scrub ahead here and show you what I did. You see at this point, everything has been dotted just as my indication. I'm not going to take any more trades anyway. Would have made a difference because no trades presented themselves according to the rules that I have anyway. And I'm thinking at this point, uh, I, I usually let these recordings run until 3.30 or so because that's when I'm just going to stop it anyway. I'm not going to take trades after the fact, but most of the time I'm not taking a trade in the afternoon anyway. Unless I mess up something, lose some money in the morning, if I find some way to redeem myself in the afternoon, I might do that. So that being said, I'm thinking about maybe stopping this recording 11, 30, 12 o'clock or so and just switching gears because that's kind of what I did today. I just let the recording go, but I'm not paying attention. I'm not working on it. So what's the point of taking up all this space and having the these videos bigger than they need to be? So just pointing this out going forward, I'm probably just going to have recording when I can record my trades halfway through the day unless something unusual happens. Nothing's going to happen after, say, noon or so. Is there anything we can tell from the daily chart? Well, obviously it was what you could call a gap in crap. They gapped higher, opened, fell, and they closed 582.35, which is kind of an interesting area, which is hard to tell here, but if we get into a closer, smaller time frame, like maybe an hourly chart, this would typically be a good area. Of, I mean, it is a good area of support. As you can see, they bounced. This is the day's activity on the hourly chart. They bounced here, got down there, but now they're closing kind of under or starting to close under this level. Currently in the post market, the price is 582.80. That's where they're at. So they you know, jumped a little bit, but anything can happen and it could change a lot by tomorrow morning. It's a little bit more clear on this 15 minute chart. They're below like say two relatively important moving averages. That's the 100 in the purple and the 50 in the blue. So they don't look too strong for the day, but don't forget in the big picture, there is nothing bearish about this chart. And we have one more day of the week. So if you look at the weekly chart, a couple of things to point out is the timing of how long it's taken them to get to where they are now this week. If they had a nice solid signal of a trend change on high volume, then we've got something they could pull back. But only thing I'm really seeing at this point is timing's decent. Volume's really low. I don't, I doubt they're going to pick up a lot of volume tomorrow, but you know, never say never. But they have kind of got extended from the 20 period moving average. Nothing you can bank on, but oftentimes they're going to come back or go sideways or do something and let price kind of catch up to that. But once again, a weekly chart, a lot of data goes into that. So just sticking to the daily, we're still bullish. As much as I like to feel like they've got a pullback at some point in a big way, they haven't given a strong signal of that. Unless you say today this gap in crap uh, meant something. But tomorrow morning, we're going to have more refined levels. But I can't say anything with confidence in the long term at this point. On the logs, the first one we're going to look at is the playing by the rules log. Pretty easy, straightforward, one base hit. The other one, it's uh, bold just to show that the, this level was hit but not traded because it was within 30 minutes of the closing bell. So four points, take a look at the averages, the totals, and so forth. On my trades over here at the Sam's Trades Output tab, Sam's Trades Log, is the same thing, but I got a little more 4.75 points because my four contract trade needed to be $950 before commissions. So that's a wrap for today. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you learned something, found some value. If you did, I would appreciate it if you like this video and subscribe to the channel. Keep this thing going and growing. I appreciate the support. Tomorrow morning, new levels will be on the board, fresh new game plan, and we will take it from there.
Thanks again. Have a great rest of your day.